Let's talk about the rivalry between Databricks and Snowflake because this article just came out and what I liked about it is that it's very detailed. I think as long as the media doesn't have some sort of skin in the game with either party, then I think the articles can be very good. Also, if you cannot really afford to read the article because now they put everything behind the paywall, I'm going to try to provide my commentary on everything and I'm going to talk about everything that this article covers. I'm also going to try to expand on things here and there so you won't be missing anything. As I'm a Databricks Partner Solutions Architect Champion, I think you can imagine that I'm a lot more familiar with Databricks than I am with Snowflake. But I also talked to many salespeople from Snowflake because last year they approached me. So I can say that I understand very well how the two compare. Although I have to say that my bias can be sometimes towards Databricks. But in this video, I'm going to try and keep it in check. So I promise you that I'm going to be balanced because we already have enough tribalism in tech. Also, I get paid as a consultant, so it doesn't really matter because I try to serve my clients' interests regardless of the platform. In the end, both platforms have their pros and their cons, and as a solutions architect, you need to help your end client. And that's the goal, right? So you can choose your platform based on what's necessary for the workload that you're going to be running. Okay, let's go through this and please hit the like button and subscribe because your help can get this video in front of many other people and in this way you also support this channel and the time that I spend creating these videos. As it turns out, Snowflake was looking for acquisitions and they were in negotiations with Tabular, which is a company specialized in AI. But then Databricks actually swooped in and they ended up buying it for about triple the price that Snowflake was negotiating for. So from 600 million to almost 2 billion according to people familiar with the deal. That price was huge for a startup because they were only doing about 1 million in revenue. So clearly the competition between the two was the reason why Databricks wanted to get this deal over and done. And here's an article from June when Databricks actually announced that they're acquiring Tabular. Now, why is the partnership so important and why did both companies want to buy Tabular? First, both wanted in the last years, right? They wanted to improve their open source capabilities and Tabular being founded by the creators of Apache Iceberg was actually a significant player in the open source data management space. By acquiring Tabular, both companies would have gained direct access to expertise in Apache Iceberg, which is a popular open source format for managing data in cloud environments. And both Snowflake and Databricks, you know, they're positioning themselves to be leaders in open source solutions. And to be honest, that partnership would have enhanced that. And this way, Snowflake, for example, could have counterbalanced the Delta format if they had Apache Iceberg in the bag. And I remember that Snowflake salespeople were pushing Apache Iceberg integration pretty hard. And now we know the reason for that. Unfortunately for them, they had tight pockets and the high bidder got the deal done. And the partnership between Databricks and Tabular is a significant one because it unifies the leading open source lakehouse formats, right? You get Delta Lake and you get Apache Iceberg. So by acquiring Tabular, Databricks actually brings together the creators of this format, right? And it will enhance interoperability in the data lakehouse architecture space. And to be fair, it's gonna provide stronger market ties and a stronger market positioning for Databricks. And I think strategically it was a great move. I think they could have gotten it cheaper, but in the end it's their money and I'm really happy for them. Another factor that might have contributed to the high price tag was the timing, right? Because the agreement was announced during Snowflake's annual conference. They actually announced it just before the keynote speech by Snowflake's new CEO. And that was a strong statement. It was a strong move, I gotta say. So probably it was worth the price if you wanted to make a point. And to be fair, this type of tactic is completely different from when they initially started. Both were founded in the early 2010s and initially they had completely separate niches. They actually referred business to one another and apparently Databricks's marketing team even used Snowflake for analytics. Now this was the first time I actually heard about this, so it's really interesting to see how this actually got started. But as you see nowadays, the relationship broke down. And the main reason for that is that in the last years, each company actually released overlapping products. So they started attacking each other's market. Snowflake grew quicker, right? And in 2021, it actually had a huge IPO, but Databricks stayed private and now it's one of the world's highest value startups. Rumors of its IPO started maybe two years ago, but it still didn't happen. And having in mind that the market is not in great shape, I think they're gonna prefer to hold off, you know, for a bit. Strategically, I don't think it would be a good move because staying private actually helps them to continue innovating and to pivot faster when needed, you know, especially nowadays when the landscape is changing 
every quarter. I think they're going to stay private until the market picks back up and then we're going to get another bull run and then maybe Databricks is going to go for that IPO. Also because they're private and because they have good funding, I think Databricks can actually play the public antagonist and then they can use the let's say interesting marketing techniques and interesting sales tactics because they have initiatives to take business from a snowflake and those are especially interesting right when it comes to their primary offering right because they're trying to get clients around data warehousing and they're going to try to move everything to a lake house architecture from what this article is saying and listen to be fair i have no idea if this is happening but apparently databricks salespeople offer to help pay off prospects databricks contracts in the form of credits if they actually switched vendors or they discounted their offering to win business and I think this is just business nowadays and undercutting is a sales tactic, I guess, but funding companies, right, to get your own product on board, it can be lucrative because then in the long run, right, you can get that Trojan horse through the door and then you can get business easier with that client over time. Every company is doing this, I think, and it's not good for the competition, right? Because most companies do this, but Microsoft actually pioneered this and I think they're the biggest player due to this type of tactic. So. No wonder that when you're actually running a smaller company, you can do this a lot faster, especially if you're well funded. Now, one thing that is a huge argument between these two is cost. Both argue that their platform is less expensive and they both have slides and calculators that estimate how much money potential clients would be saving by switching to Databricks from Snowflake or from Snowflake to Databricks. You see what I did there? I'm still a Databricks champion. What can I do, right? But Sincerely, look, like both have calculators that show that they're cheaper than the other. I personally think that they have these benchmarks specifically on what suits them best, you know, based on their offering. So the only thing that you can do as an informed user, I think, is to try both, right? And then you can try both on your workloads and see which one maps better to your specific use case. But in this rivalry, in my opinion, right? And I like the fact that they specify this in the article. I think the main reason why Databricks is actually winning more business nowadays, the main reason, right, is the ads and the marketing. Because Databricks runs billboards in front of Snowflake users stating that Databricks product is nine times cheaper. And also Databricks posts countless migration stories on social media and it makes you feel that you need to get everything under that unified data platform. They have a huge push for Unity Catalog and also they have a huge push to migrate your tables to Delta format. And they also promote AI so much that you just want to spin up a Databricks instance and just get started. I think they're doing a wonderful job to get people excited and they are the main platform that got their employees to actually post on LinkedIn all the time and promote their products. I mean, listen, this shift where companies try and they actually succeed, right? In getting their employees to post for them on social media. I think Databricks is the most successful in it. It seems like all of my LinkedIn is just full of Databricks posts. And Snowflake has done this and they both managed to tribalize their employees, you know, against one another. And I have this video in which I compare Databricks to Snowflake and it's a relatively straightforward and simple comparison. It's not meant to be extremely detailed, but I think I got a lot more Snowflake comments defending Snowflake. Although again, I stated in the end that both have their pros and their cons and I didn't really get too deep into the technical aspects. But I think this is tribalism, you know, and this tribalism gets people excited and then gets attention from the media. And I think Databricks' CEO knows this very well. And the reason why he's doing all of this, right, he's trying to play that good game. Because in the end, he's just playing a game to try to get more attention. In the end, don't hate the players, right? It's just a game. And the reality is that Databricks is winning the valuation game. Its revenue growth is accelerating according to an investor presentation in June. Also recurring sales were expected to hit 2.4 billion in July. And also investors gave Databricks a 43 billion valuation, which is where the stock market currently values Snowflake at about 42.5 billion. So being private and getting the same valuation, I believe this helps Databricks a little bit more. Databricks plans to add 1500 more workers this year and compared to Snowflake, on workers alone, right? They're growing twice as fast. And I think this is a valuable metric as well because what I see here in the UK at least, right? A lot of roles are for Databricks engineers while a lot of others are not really moving. So I guess they are spending more money to grow and they're trying to add more clients and also their clients and the agencies, they're also trying to look for Databricks engineers to implement those projects. And this is happening more than ever. So if you're looking for a Databricks job, 
getting Databricks certified is a great way to signal to employers that you're familiar with the stack. And at getthatbatch.com, we offer practice exams to help you prepare for Databricks certification exams. We currently have both Azure and Databricks practice exams, and we're adding more every week. So definitely check it out, because if you're looking for a way to support this channel, this is a way. You support Decision Forest, and you also support yourself by learning a new skill and getting Databricks certified. So while Databricks is spending money to grow, on the other hand, Snowflake says that they're more profitable, and even though they're not hiring as much, they're generating cash, while Databricks is actually just burning cash. And in the end, there's always a balance, and we're gonna see how this plays out in the long run, but I think you still need to spend money in order to make money, and only the future will tell us who had the better strategy. In the end, both platforms are used for ingesting and analyzing big data, and the market for this type of product is just growing, so I think there's space for both of them, but there's also external challenges, because while they're competing against each other, Microsoft and Google might actually take it all. And here's why, okay? Because they both agree that the biggest competitive risk for both of them are the big cloud providers, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. I mean, think about it, okay? Both of them need a cloud provider for the base storage and the base computing layers because they sit on top of these. And now that all three big cloud providers are working to improve their data products, once they actually do that, right? If they can, and Microsoft Fabric is showing that they can. I think they're just gonna undercut both Snowflake and Databricks on pricing. And in the end, the pricing is what matters if the technology is similar. So you get Google Cloud with BigQuery as a direct competitor to Snowflake's core product, and you get Microsoft Fabric for Databricks' core products. And within Databricks, cooperation type of titian is becoming a more common type to refer to their relationship with Microsoft, because Databricks actually grew a lot due to their closeness and a massive chunk of Databricks' business actually came and still comes from customers that are using Microsoft's cloud infrastructure. But also Microsoft also benefited a lot because they learned a lot about how to create better data products. And as Microsoft does, it learns and then competes with you and then crushes you because of its size. I think that's the real threat, you know, not between Databricks and Snowflake, but so far it's kind of fun to watch to see how both of these have this rivalry in which, you know, you know, you don't know who's going to win. But in the end, I don't think it's even going to matter if Microsoft is actually cannibalizing everything. And I think this is kind of it for the summary. I think there's a bit more to say about the Databricks versus Microsoft Fabric competition because things are getting heated there as well. So let me know if you want me to dive deeper into that. But the most important thing is, what do you think? Which side are you on? And how do you see this rivalry in the future? Let me know down in the comments. Also like and subscribe. Support this channel by getting cloud certified. And I will see you in the next one.